qui est invité ici pour la première fois à cette tribune, un acteur du monde de l'entreprise, du secteur privé, Monsieur Tony Eloumelou, banquier, fondateur de plusieurs banques, milliardaire comme on dit, parce qu'aujourd'hui il faut en parler avec beaucoup d'éclat, et vous êtes surtout à la tête d'une fondation solidaire qui permet à plusieurs milliers de jeunes euh, de, de, de se lancer dans l'entrepreneuriat. Est-ce quelle peut être, selon vous, la complémentarité de chefs d'entreprise comme vous, leur complémentarité avec les acteurs politiques, diplomatiques, pour justement combattre ces fléaux euh, que, qui, auxquels sont confrontés les pays africains en matière d'insécurité, mais aussi en matière d'endoctrinement de jeunes qui ne trouvent pas de travail, qui sont désœuvrés ou qui prennent parfois le risque de traverser les mers à leur risque et péril pour trouver de meilleures conditions de vie. Quel, est, quel peut être le rôle des entrepreneurs et du secteur privé Let me start by congratulating and commending my brother, President of Senegal, President Makisa, for this very, very positive and productive forum to discuss peace and security. I speak as a private sector person who invests in many African countries, and I know that when there is no peace and security, there can never be business. And when there is no business, to a large extent, you will not have development. It is therefore in everyone's interest especially the business sector, to see that there is peace and security in countries, especially on the African continent. We know and we say that poverty anywhere is a threat to mankind everywhere. What manifests itself in what we call security or breakdown of security or terrorism or extremism is actually deep-seated in poverty. It's deeply, deeply rooted in poverty, in joblessness. And so, with due respect, we can have 101 seminars like this, but unless and until we begin to address these issues of poverty, joblessness, amongst our young ones, they will continue to allow themselves to be brainwashed by people who see no future. They will continue to engage in extremism. So for us as private sector and for government and for the de development world, it is incumbent, compelling, important that we all come together to find a solution to this, the root cause solution to this, which is how do we get our young ones employed? How do we get our young ones to be busy? How do we make sure that they don't lend themselves to this extremism that we're talking about today? In the private sector, we believe, and we have come up with this philosophy of Africa capitalism which is a call on the private sector to invest long-term in key sectors of the African economy that will help us to create social wealth and economic prosperity. Prosperity and extremism go in opposite direction. We need to make sure, you know, I was talking with the president before we walked in here, he was telling me about the railway system he's building, 160 kilometers one hour that will be commissioned next month. That is an investment in infrastructure that will help to create more prosperity for everyone. Such investments help to stop and stem instability, security issues that we have. So for me, I preach everywhere that there are three critical things we must do. We must emphasize entrepreneurship. We must create economic hope.
to for our young ones. We must support them. We must invest in them and their future. We must make them believe that there's a reason to live. Two, we must pursue inclusive growth. Every growth or development program on our continent should be such that is total and all inclusive that helps ultimately to create jobs for our people. And we must embrace and include also our female for in the development agenda of the continent. As simple as this in sound, they can help us fundamentally in the long run in winning the war and not the battle. We talk every day about more weaponry attacks, how to deal with the insurgents. It's so critical and very important to do so. But what will make it sustainable in the long run is that investment we make in our people, in our young people, in our women for in making sure that growth is all inclusive. These are things that will help. And for us, we don't just talk about this. We don't just preach it, we try to also make it happen. At the Tony El Melo Foundation, we keep helping young Africans, empowering them, give them seed capital, train them for 12 weeks, and we're beginning to see how people from especially the displaced community, very difficult environment and communities, how their successes beginning to translate to success for communities, and how their successes is beginning to catalyze and encourage others to live a different kind of life. Recently, working with the United Nations Development Program, the Tony L. Melo Foundation and UNDP have announced a, hundred, a, a program to help empower 100,000 young Africans, especially those in the Sahel region. If activities and interventions like this will help to bring economic hope to people in this part of the world, and they will become less involved in extremism. So in a nutshell, there's a lot we all can do. Private sector, government, development partners, in making sure that we focus on winning the war on terrorism, that we make sure we stem the migration of our young people through harsh conditions wanting to cross the Mediterranean in search of hope, when indeed we have more opportunities and resources on our continent. We need to work together to ensure that extreme, extremism is totally, totally annihilated in Africa. And it's possible, but we need to to work together to achieve this. So again, I want to commend and thank His Excellency, President Maxa, for convening this program, this uh, event, and for seeking viewpoints from all development partners, African business people, and also government, so that collectively we can forge a long-lasting solution that will help us deal with this issue in Africa. Thank you. And, and um, Tony, just another quick question for you. I think everybody here will agree that wherever in the world you see extremism, um, be it in Africa or the Middle East, it's usually preceded by poverty and unemployment. So my question to you is, 50 years from now, um, or 100 years from now, what sort of difference do you hope your foundation will have made when it comes to um, securing a more stable continent? In, uh, to us, we define success actually in the lives we are able to transform, in the lives and ha that we touch in communities we have to transform. And that is why all across um, Africa, especially in distressed communities and areas, we do our best to support young ones and entrepreneurs in such places. To us, until we all work together to eradicate poverty on our continent, until we get our female fully ingrained, 
and involved in economic activity on the continent until we make sure that our young ones are not jobless, the journey continues. We would like to we'll continue to do this by engaging government through advocacy, by engaging with our development partners, as we have done now with the United Nations Development Program, as we have done with the International Red Cross, where they also support him. For the first time, you think that Red Cross, the way they operated before, was to provide relief post event. But now, the Red Cross, working with the Tony and Melu Foundation, is now being proactive in providing, uh, supporting entrepreneurs, providing seed capital, non refundable seed capital for them in distressed communities like in Nigeria, in the Niger Delta part of Nigeria, in the northeastern part of uh, Nigeria, with a view to making sure that we create entrepreneurs and involve more people in what's happening. So, to us, the next 50 years, 100 years, we want to see a developed Africa that embraces this philosophy of prioritizing our young ones that to the point that they have jobs, two, that the growth is inclusive, and three, that our women are involved, and that we will not, an Africa where there won't be security challenges again, that can only come when we create jobs, when we support this team in young Africans. And I believe that is a new paradigm. When we go for G7 or G20 or UN sessions, we should keep preaching that in the 21st century at a time like this, there's a more sustainable way of dealing with security in Africa. That whilst we deal with security issues that confront us today through force, we need to win the minds and hearts of our people. We need to win the long-term war by making sure that they are more involved and prioritized in economic activities. Thank you. Merci, merci beaucoup. Voilà, nous devons malheureusement arrêter là euh, ce débat car euh, euh, Monsieur le Président du Sénégal, la Mauritanie et Madame Parly, tout le monde est à peu pressé et comme vous l'aurez constaté, nous avons pris beaucoup de retard euh, dans cette cérémonie d'ouverture de ce sixième forum international sur la paix et la sécurité ici à Dakar et pendant deux jours, bien entendu, vont se succéder les ateliers, les travaux vont se poursuivre pour déboucher, nous l'espérons, sur des recommandations et de bonnes idées pour propager la paix et la sécurité. Merci à tous. Et, euh, et enfin, on va clôturer cette séquence par, euh, par de la musique avec euh, le chanteur et musicien Afri euh, sénégalais Ismaël Lowe. Voilà. Merci à tous. À bientôt. Merci.